what's up guys welcome back to my channel this is a question and answer let's go and dive in to the questions people have sent me on instagram so let's see uh larry do you have any pictures of you in your prime but natural yes i do uh i competed in natural shows from 2003 till 2006 and i won the world championships in uh natural bodybuilding with the fame organization 2005 and again in 2006 uh, with the in the couples category with Sylvia Tremblay. So second question it says no question. Just thank you for your content and advice. Fan from France. Bonjour mes amis de la France. Merci beaucoup. Je vais continuer à vous donner plein d'informations. Fais juste uh, stay tuned. Restez sur mon uh, channel de YouTube. Merci beaucoup. Uh, I am from Iraq. Do you have uh, remote clients? Do you train remote clients? Yes, I do. Uh, my online training is worldwide, so no boundaries now with the internet. So from anywhere in the world, I can make you a better you. Uh, can you do a backflip? I, I used to be able to do a backflip. I haven't done a backflip in about, oh, more than 10 years, but I will try and get a backflip for you guys <laughs> and not break my neck. Will you ever step on stage again? Um, I am a retired bodybuilder. If ever they come back uh, with the Masters Olympia, I will compete in the Masters Olympia just because it's the Olympia. So why not? How do you increase appetite? Now, the best trick, guys, to increase appetite is a peptide called MK677. But often mistaken uh, for a SARM. It is not a SARM. It is a peptide. So what is a peptide? Anything that has more than two amino acids bounded together is basically a peptide. MK677 is a GH secretal GOG. So it sends a signal to your pituitary gland to secrete more growth hormones. It gets you a little leaner, but it works on ghrelin, which is your hormone responsible for appetite. When I first took MK, my body weight was a stable 208 pounds at five foot six and three quarters. And I went up to 220 within two and a half weeks without changing anything except taking the MK677 and eating more food. I'm always angry. Uh, how do you become a contest prep coach? Uh, it's a really good idea, guys, to compete. Uh, it's good to walk the walk. So if you're going to impose some uh, diet restrictions on someone, it's kind of a good idea to have gone through it yourself and uh, speak from experience. Um, and the best way to, to learn is to be mentored by someone who's been in the business for a long time, because it's one thing to compete yourself and you might do really good training yourself, but what worked for you might not work for somebody else. So you have to be adaptive and know how to uh, respond to everybody's different needs. And uh, if you follow a mentor and you see him do his thing with different athletes and you learn from him, I think that's the best way to do it. But first off, start doing uh, a competition yourself, compete in a competition. And so you know what, uh, what to expect when you impose it to others. Can you make me win the overall title? Uh, I will do my best to help you win any contest that you enter. But yes, I will do my best. Uh, women's body handle fat better than men. Uh, it depends. Uh, women can give birth, so it, it makes more sense for them to hold a little bit more fat because fat can help you survive in a, a moment of famine. So, uh, but women do have more body fat than men in general but it's a very individualized thing. So some women get leaner than men faster, some guys lean, so it's, it's very hard to, uh, to uh, answer. It's a case by case thing. How do you get over a breakup? Uh, uh, that depends if you're the one breaking it up or if you're the one that got dumped on. If you got dumped, the best revenge is success. So become a better version of yourself and make the person that dump you regret their choice of dumping you. And uh, how do you get over it? Well, you, you go to the gym and you lift some heavy shit. That kind of uh, gets the stress away and you can take it out on the weights instead of uh, 
you know, banging her head against the wall. <laughs> Who was my inspiration when I started lifting? Um, well, my dad got me uh, into lifting weights, but the first guy I looked up to when I started competing was Sean Ray because we're the same height. And Sean Ray was at five foot seven, was placing uh, top three Olympia um, against guys like Lee Haney and Dorian Yates. And I, I, because we're roughly the same uh, height, I always told myself if ever I get to compete at the same body weight as Sean Ray, that's what I'm gonna look like. And I did compete at the same body weight and I did not look exactly like Sean Ray. So it doesn't mean that at the same height and weight, you, you would have the same look. Uh, Sean Ray would have probably wiped <laughs> his ass clean with my shape, but uh, he's the guy that, that, uh, that I looked up to and uh, that I, I, I tried to emulate. Do you think protein powders are important post-workout? Uh, they're not that important, guys. Uh, always go with real food first. The thing with the protein powders is they get digested very, very quickly. And right after a work, good workout, your body's like a sponge. Like your muscles are drained of energy. You want to start the, the, the rejuvenation process and, and you want to get the protein in and replace the, the glycogen that you just spent in the gym if your workout was intense enough. You can do that with real food. The thing with the protein powders is that you can more quickly get those nutrients to your muscles and start the building, the rebuilding process. Um, but you do not have, absolutely have to have protein powders, not at all. You can just uh, go with a very lean protein and uh, some sucrose type of fruits like apricots or white rice, which is very easily digestible and very high in the glycemic index. So protein powders, if you're in the bulking phase, when you want, want to try to get the most calories in, uh, good idea, go with a quality protein powders because that's where all the supplement companies kind of screw you in the butt with no Vaseline, okay? So quality protein powders work great if you're in a bulking phase and you need to get a lot of calories in and it's not that bulky. Top five supplements to use daily and why? Okay, uh, there are about five or six uh, supplements that are a must. It's a good idea to get a good multivitamin and mineral just in, as an insurance to get all the, 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 the nutrients you need and the cofactors for the well uh, functioning of your body. Really big on um, beta and hydrochloride uh, with digestive enzymes because it's one thing to, to eat a lot of food. It's another thing to assimilate that food. So we used to say you are what you eat. Now we say you are what you assimilate. So if you don't assimilate your food, it makes for very expensive poop. Uh, same thing with the supplements. If your stomach doesn't have enough hydrochloric acid in it, you will not digest your supplements well, nor the protein, nor the, the minerals in your veggies. So, um, Digestive enzymes containing betaine hydrochloride is a must. Everybody's deficient in omega-3s. We used to always live around lakes. So when the hunting was bad, uh, fishing was always great. So our bodies for years was used to having a greater uh, amount of omega-3s per week. So it's a good idea to supplement omega-3s. They kind of inhibit the genes that help you accumulate fat and it kind of kickstarts the genes that help you burn fat. Uh, next supplement on the list would be vitamin D3. So if you're a uh, lifeguard in the sun, whatever 70% of your skin exposed to the sun with no sunscreen, you will get your vitamin D3. Do not get burnt. Uh, but if you do put sunscreen, you will not absorb your vitamin D3. So it might be a good idea to supplement with your vitamin D3. And it's actually a hormone, it's a steroid hormone that acts on very uh, different planes. But ideally, you want to get a good amount of vitamin D3. You can check your blood levels of vitamin D3 to adjust the dosage accordingly. Your opinion on young athletes taking PEDs? Good question. Um, it all depends on what your goals are. Ideally, in a perfect world, uh, you would not want to take PEDs before the age of 25 
and no, not before at least two years of very serious training, not that on and off. I've been training three months and I took off three months. Uh, if you're consistent with your training and you let your whole, your own hormone levels peak at around 25, then it's a good idea because whatever level your testosterone, your natural testosterone level was when you started taking PDs, that is the top it will ever get. It won't go to its full potential. So you might have to resort to uh, hormone therapy uh, at a younger age. Uh, if you compete and your, your goals are to become pro and you've had at least two years of training and, 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 and you're very, very serious about it, okay, it might work. But if you're just trying to get a better shape to go to the beach, I would wait until my own testosterone levels peak. What is my opinion on over-the-counter fat burners? Well, fat burners work. They, they increase thermogenesis, so increase your body's temperature, and your body increases body temperature by burning something, which is your body fat most of the time. And a uh, good idea when you're at the end of a dieting phase, uh, when the diet kind of slows down, I wouldn't advise them uh, if you're for a guy above 10% body fat, for a woman above 16. If you want to get to a single uh, digit, very low, then that would be an idea. But you gotta, you know, you, you don't start a diet right away with fat burners. You let the diet run its course. And when it starts to stall and you want to get that little edge more, that's when you would incorporate fat burners. And we're talking here about caffeine, ephedrine, uh, aspirin, which is what they typically call the ECA stack. Best form of cardio. Now there are two uh, ways to do cardio. There's long steady state, where you aim at about 120 heartbeats per minute. Uh, basically, if you're too out of breath to hold a conversation, you're going too fast, you're not in that fat burning zone or you could do what they call HIT, high intensity interval training. Most people get it wrong. It has to be a maximum effort for about 30 seconds where you have to take a break. If you've never done this before, you would sprint for about 30 seconds. You would take about four minutes, uh, moderate pace to kind of recuperate and then you would start a sprint again for 30 seconds and you try to max out at 15 minutes. If you could do 15 minutes like that easily, you would cut down the moderate part to, at four minutes to maybe three and a half minutes and so on. Once you can do 30 second sprints, all out sprints and one minute moderate and keep going for 15 minutes, your cardiovascular capacity is amazing, okay? But what I mean by sprinting is, let's say you go on, on an air bike or a spinning bike. The way I explain it to my clients is that if someone walks next to you while you're doing that cardio sprint 30 seconds, they have to be thinking in their head, wow, that person is nuts, okay? You have to think about, okay, there's a bear running after you and you're running for your life. So you're going all out. So on a spinning bike, you get your butt off the bench and you, you sprint like your life depends on it, all right? So that is my form of hit cardio. And it depends on, on your intensity level and what, what stage of dieting you're at very end of a dieting phase for a bodybuilding show you will probably not have the energy to do a proper hit so the long steady state would make more sense never do a hit uh, on an empty stomach in the morning it raises cortisol way too much but you could do steady state in the morning on an empty stomach I have no problem with that as long as it's low intensity again about 120 beats per minute is it your real hair <laughs> I, I do not dye my hair, I do not dye my beard. This is the au naturel. Um, so nah, I'm all natural here. <laughs> uh, best snack meals for those long workout shifts without the microwave. Uh, I don't have any particular advice on that. I just eat my regular meals cold. If you're a competitive bodybuilder, you kind of get used to eating cold uh, meat and stuff because fuel is just a means to an end. We don't eat for uh, pleasure. We eat for what it does to our body. In the off season where we're not getting ready for a show, that's when we eat for pleasure. We have a little leeway, but getting ready for a show, 
you know, you eat cold and that's it, man. Tough it up. As far as questions, I think that's it for now. I hope it answered some of your questions. If you uh, recognize some of your questions here, uh, comment down below if there's any other questions I didn't answer or you think, ah, I would have liked to know uh, this or that. So comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel and seize the day, my friends.